but Edgar Martinez refused to lose. And now it's high noon for the Yankees' hired gun. Decision time in the great Northwest. ABC Sports welcomes you to game five of the division series between the Western Division champion, Seattle Mariners, and the American League wild card, the New York Yankees. Well, good evening and welcome, everybody. With Jim Cott, I'm Brett Musburger. Nice to have you along with us. Jimmy, the mood between these two teams is really stark here today, but I guess the stakes are different. Let's start with the Seattle Mariners. Well, what a contrast. I think I was more nervous around the batting cage than Lou Pinella. Lou Pinella is loose. His team is loose. What does it mean to the Mariners if they win? Obviously, they play the Cleveland Indians, but if they lose, I think they still win. This has been a great year up here. Record attendance. The club has had the best year in franchise history. The only player that might feel a little pressure tonight would be their starting pitcher, Andy Ben. He's never been in a championship game before. He's a free agent at the end of this year. If he could come up with a super effort in game five, it could be worth several million dollars to that young right hander. A little bit different with the New York Yankees. I think it's safe to assume that they were more apt to be sleepless in Seattle last night. The stakes are a little bit different for this organization. Very, very quiet around the batting cage in, uh, in the Yankee camp. And what would it mean to them if they won? I think it would be a relief to the Yankees. They had a great September to get into the playoffs. They took a two game lead in New York. They have a five to nothing lead in game four can't hold on to it. So if they would win I think they'd say we can go to Cleveland if they lose could be devastating. Buck Showalter doesn't have a contract. Don Mattingly doesn't have a contract. There could be a lot of changes on that ball club. We have had some magnificent hitting in this series so far. 19 home runs. That's a high for any postseason series. You talk about a Seattle heart attack. Just look at the middle the heart of the Seattle lineup. Ken Griffey Jr. with a home run to put him ahead last night. The dramatic grand slammer by Edgar Martinez. Tino Martinez hitting right behind him. Often goes unnoticed. Add all those numbers up, hitting almost 450. Seven home runs, 19 RBIs. Now the Yankees have a trio equally as potent. It starts with Bernie Williams, who has nine hits. That's tied for the league, the series lead. Don Mattingly had four hits in last night's game. And of course, Paul O'Neill had that two run homer to give them the five nothing lead. They're hitting over 450. They have five home runs and they've knocked in 13. And Jim, if you want a pitcher for game five at a divisional series, well, it's simply dial a pitcher. David Cohn, seven postseason starts. This is the first time that two pitchers acquired during the year have ever hooked up in postseason play. Andy Bennis, of course, is a fastball pitcher. He has to get his breaking ball and change up over if he's going to hold down this Yankee fastball hitting lineup. So one more time in this great series, the kingdom is ready to rock. We pause for these messages from our ABC. Watching and waiting with the rest of us, the Cleveland Indians, and congratulations to that organization and their fine fans. Joining us here today, Jack Arut. And Jack, what about Luis Soho taking the field here for the Mariners? Well, Brent, it was a scary moment back in the eighth inning last night during a Yankee double play when Mariners shortstop Luis Soho slid into the second base and took a spike on the inside of his wrist. Now, it broke the skin, and I spoke to Luis during batting practice, and he said, immediately I had no feeling. I felt in my hand as if maybe I had severed a tendon. He thought maybe he wouldn't even be playing in game five. When the swelling subsided, they examined it closely, and they didn't even need any stitches. He said, it's stiff, but there is no problem tonight because normally I would have taken the day off, but not in this case. All right, Jack, thank you. And here's tonight's Budweiser starting lineup for the New York Yankees. The same as yesterday. Wade Boggs, Bernie Williams, Paul O'Neill, Ruben Sierra, Don Mattingly, Deion James, Mike Stanley, Tony Fernandez, and Randy Velarde set to tee off against Andy Bennis. And Jim Cott, you've been there so many times in the past. Big game. He doesn't have big game experience, as you pointed out. How do you settle down? How does he get a hold of his nerves? I would say, Brent, that the one thing Andy Bennis has going for him, actually he has a couple of things, an outstanding fastball, a good changeup and a slider, but it pays to be a power pitcher if it's the first time in these situations because the adrenaline, the noise of the crowd is going to pump him up. That'll only help that fastball. The man behind the plate who will be calling the balls and strikes, and he's one of the better umpires in the American League. It's Jim Evans. Danny Morrison down at first. Tim Welke moves to second. John Hirschbeck's at third. Down the lines. 
Joe Brinkman and Rocky Rowe. The umpires have been very much a part of this series and a couple of stories left over from yesterday's game. We will get to it. We had a brushback war that was intercepted by Brinkman as we take a look at the lineup behind Bennis. That's the same alignment that Lou Pinella has had in first four games. Vince Coleman and left Ken Griffey Jr. in center. Jay Buhner in right. Around the infield, Mike Blowers, Luis Soho, who Jack talked about. Joey Corey has made more errors than any second baseman in the American League. Tino Martinez at first. Dan Wilson, an outstanding catcher. Wade Box steps in to lead it off. And again, if the Yankees win, because they are the wild card, they cannot have the home field advantage in the league's championship series. So they will go to Cleveland to open up on Tuesday night. But if the Mariners win, then the Indians will jet to the Northwest. Catcher Danny Wilson was very active yesterday, unable to stop just one bad pitch thrown by Norm Charlton. He's a one time high school goaltender, very active behind the plate. Seattle fans <laughs> with two strikes. They did it for nine innings yesterday. Got that is a live fastball that Venice has brought to game five. And not very often do you throw a fastball by Wade Boggs and he swings and misses. Now let's see what the hottest Yankee in terms of number of hits has to offer as you watch this strike again. Swung right through it something Boggs does not do often. Bernie Williams. Became the first player in postseason history to hit a home run that he left handed and right handed in one postseason game and Venice is firing bullets right now. This is the kind of start that can calm down young pitcher. This is a menacing look, isn't it? And he is just missing on that outside corner. Well, that's going to be his key, as it is most of the time for pitchers, even if you throw hard. He has to get the change up over and the slider, because eventually these Yankees will catch up with the fastball. Out of play. with the fastball and that one with the hard slider. Paul O'Neill and Bennis looks very eager to go to work. Good pitchers are always ready to fire. They can't wait. That one did not miss by much. Evans yeah, might have looked down at that ball. It's the kind of game you won't see Andy Bennis stand still very often. He's in constant motion. Yeah. Well, 
We saw it in yesterday's game from the mounds. Pitchers were trying to spit and they couldn't do it. <laughs> That's how tight things were. <laughs> and it'll get tight. Appeal, nothing doing, says third base umpire John Hirschbeck. He will be a key man, Brent John Hirschbeck. The Yankees have seven left hand hitters, and Bennis is going to try to go down and away with the change up and breaking ball. And you'll see a lot of those almost swings. O'Neill. Forget the almost swing. I thought the pitch was high enough. Three balls and one strike. Get high in the air. And playable in the outfield. Vince Coleman. The Yankees are coming in order here at the top of the first. It's 95 Division Series game brought to you by the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. The makers of Advil and Texaco Hamelin Formula 3 motor oil. Now here's tonight's Budweiser starting lineup for the Seattle Mariners. One change for Lou Pinella. He has dropped third baseman Mike Flowers to that nine spot. Dan Wilson jumps ahead of him, but folks, the top part. Vince Coleman, Joey Cora must keep them off because the next hitters have wreaked havoc. Ken Griffey, Edgar Martinez, Tino Martinez, and even the sixth man, Jay Buhner. And Luis Soho has been a dangerous out for the Mariners. When you talk to the Mariners hitters about David Cohn, it's not very often you hear left hand hitters say, This guy has got a nasty slider. Lefties like to hit the slider. Cohn, and that's what he did in game one, has a good slider, good fork ball. The blister on the middle finger is healed. He has no problems, and he has his full four days rest. Jimmy, which finger did you say that blister's on? On the, on the middle finger, and he thought it was from throwing the fork ball. It bothered him for a couple of starts, but it's all right now. Yankees in the field have Deion James in left, Bernie Williams in center, Paul O'Neill in right. Gold Glovers in the infield, Boggs, Fernandez, and Mattingly, Randy Velarde at second, Mike Stanley outstanding behind the plate. Mattingly had difficulty yesterday defensively, and it was unusual. Buck Walter. So well knows to see Don a little bit shaky, not only physically but uh, mentally at one time. We'll have a chance to review that play for you. Now here is Vince Coleman, and when he gets on base, especially on artificial turf, things start to happen. Mike Stanley flashes the sign out to Cone. Jim Evans is your plate umpire, bottom of the first. This will be out of play. Some of the largest crowds in the history of this franchise. Seattle waiting 19 years to reach postseason competition and they're hoping to make the most of it. Usually when you come up to the Northwest, you find all kinds of football fans, basketball fans. Nice to see the area turning its attention to baseball. Now come. Two biggest acquisitions for the Mariners. Middle of August, they got Vince Coleman. Middle of July, Norm Charlton. That's what's really helped turn this team's fortunes around. Charlton out of the bullpen, of course. One away. In the air to center field, and Bernie Williams comes in along with James from left, and James will call for it. That's the thing about David Cohn. He is a fly ball pitcher, and Coleman and Cora do their damage when they can slap it off the turf. Well, like Coleman, Cora is a switch hitter, and he'll be batting left handed. And after Coleman coaxed a walk in that fateful eighth inning yesterday, it was Cora's drive bunt which really ignited the rally and helped set the table for Edgar Martinez's grand slam home run. High in the air, shallow center, and this time Bernie Williams will take it. So quickly, two fly outs here at the bottom of the first inning. Batting third, center fielder, number 24, Ken Griffey. Yeah. He's enjoying a monster. Four home runs, but the Yankees get a little bit of an edge. Anytime you can get Griffey 
up without anybody on base. It's an advantage. Out most of the season or half of the season with that wrist injury and his timing has come back at a perfect time in September he was still a little sluggish with the bat but here in postseason play like a lot of stars they elevate their game Griffey certainly has. Close to that inside corner. And that's what pitchers do in games like this. You feel out the home plate umpire and find out what that zone is going to be, how liberal, how tight. That's two balls in one spot. Get high and playable in the infield. Fernandez waits for it. And now the Mariners are out in order here. We are through one. It's scoreless in Seattle. Jim, let's take everybody back yesterday. We had a brushback incident. Might have been ignited, but for some quick work by the umpire. Chris uh, Bazio and uh, Umpire Joe Brinkman had a session to settle it out of the mound. Actually, it was good gamesmanship by Lou Pinella. Scott Kamenicki, who Pinella says uh, consistently throws up and in, knocked down Joey Cora. And he'd even talked about it with his bench coach before the game, Lee Ilya. He said, if they do that, I'm going to instruct my pitcher to knock one of the Yankees down. Joe Brinkman intercepted it, and what Lou said, it took all the inside pitches away for the rest of the game, and his, his hitters could dig in, and they did. Now Ruben Sierra steps in. Andy Bennis, and there's one that is high, and uh, Sierra just moving around a little bit in the batter's box. He has been quiet as the designated hitter since the series has shifted here to the kingdom. And it's two balls. Hit deep. Coming over though is Coleman and Griffey runs in front of him and makes the put out. What was interesting about the scene on the mound yesterday, and those of you who were watching along with us, remember that Brinkman and Rocky Rose spent a long time out there on the mound. The fact is that Basio did not believe the messengers when they said it's off we're not throwing at anybody Lou Pinella had to come off the bench to tell Basio look that's right we're not going to engage in any warfare and the game continued. Yeah, we got lost. what got lost in that wild game yesterday and the gamesmanship we talked about is this guy Mattingly tough day in the field but he had four hits. So far, it has been a small strike zone in this game. Evans pumps the right hand that time, a ball and a strike. Those that have not seen a lot of Mattingly, one thing he's added in the last month is a leg kick, like so many big league hitters do. Instead of the level stride, he'll pick that front leg up. Not a bad one that time, but fouled it away. And now it comes to one and two. Fastball pitcher can bring a breaking ball that breaks that sharply into a game that quickly. He is a dangerous pitcher right now, folks. A couple pitches like that, and we'll see Buck Showalter try to do the same thing Pinella did. Venice will try to push lefties off the plate and get them out down and away. Yeah, Venice is demanding the inside part of the plate. No question about it. 2 2. So the Evansville connection. Andy Bennis looking in at the player he grew up admiring, Don Mattingly, with that leg kick of his and staying alive. Evansville, Indiana. 2 2. In fact, Andy Bennis might be a little in awe right now, growing up 
and going to the University of Evansville Mattingly was his hero when he signed his contract he celebrated in Mattingly's restaurant. After that wild one yesterday, that everybody is swinging, the, the hitters are kind of feeling their way through the first couple of innings here. Yesterday, everybody was digging in from the heels, cut and slashed from the first pitch. We did not have any inning in which either the Yankees or the Mariners were retired in order yesterday. And so far here today, we haven't had a single base runner as the fortunes ebb and flow in this grand game. Last foul and out of play. Of course, that's what tells you what is different about the game of baseball every day are the starting pitchers. And it's going to be a little tougher to score runs against these two guys. James had a notion. Credit him with good thinking. Last year, strike didn't bother him a bit. He was playing baseball in Japan. Ball on a strike now, two outs on Deion James. is probably watching this game he's a member of the Atlanta Braves was the Yankees starting left fielder James is really a better pinch hitter but since Polonia was designated he's become the everyday left fielder and not as effective. Slow bounder Tino Martinez will make the play at first base and the Yankees again are out in order. He was born in New York and raised in Puerto Rico and now he has come to Seattle to haunt the New York Yankees. Against John Wetland bases loaded. only in box scores but you are looking at someone who is one of the great players today and we do not use that loosely yes that's what he's hitting in this championship series 600 this is the purest of the pure hitters right here one of the few times that we have seen a wild swing against that biting breaking ball offered up by Cone. Slider, and that's the key to David Cohn's game. I promise to me, my National League friends, that I wouldn't bring it up. But here it is: when we look at Edgar Martinez, we've got to say that without the designated hitter rule, we would not have an Edgar Martinez. He would not exist in baseball today. He uh, was a third baseman, hurt his knee, can't play in the field, but he can hit. One one. So Evans is uh, going to make sure that that pitch is up above the knees. At least that's what he's indicating to both sides so far. Not many right handers can boast that number against David Cohn. Two and one. Well, they got him to bite on that first pitch, but not that one. And the count now is in favor of Edgar. Here's the hitter's count three and one. Looking pitch. Good 
Down low, high chopper. Makes it center field. Martinez, the first base runner in this game. He continues to wear out the Yankee pitchers. Yankees have to feel good about this. They kept it in the ballpark. Actually, it was a good pitch by David Cohn, but the turf here in Seattle is very lively. And Edgar takes the low pitch off the turf for a bouncing single. Tino Martinez, non brothers. This is the first baseman. One time, first round draft choice. There's one birthday today that we will not be celebrating. 39 years ago, Don Larson pitched that perfect game classic over the Brooklyn Dodgers. The final there was 2 0, and Edgar Martinez has taken care of that in a hurry. Again, if you had not followed the Yankees, Buck Showalter, more than any manager I've been around the big leagues in 36 years, will pay close attention. To base runners. Edgar Martinez is not a threat to steal, but Buck still likes to get their attention over there. That'll go into Mike Stanley. And actually, some pitchers resent this a little. It takes them out of their rhythm, paying too much attention to guys who are not threats to steal. On the hit and run, and it is fouled away. And you'll probably see a bit of that. That was not a steal, but a hit and run. Edgar looking back at Sam Perlazzo to see if it's on again. Both of these managers will try to get an early run. The Riverboat Gambler. He'll take a chance. He used six of his nine pitchers to stay alive yesterday. And today, his ace, Randy Johnson, available if he needs him for an inning. And wouldn't the Cleveland Indians love to see him out there for at least an inning? One and one. High and out of play. Now they've changed their allegiance today, I think, Brett, the Cleveland Indians. They like to see the Seattle win and all those pitchers forced a game five for David Cohn. But now I think they would prefer to see the Yankees. The Yankees would go to Cleveland. Mike Stanley is looking up at a bar that runs across directly behind home plate. And a ball that has hit foul right behind home, which strikes it is out of play, but it is possible. And I have seen several here in the past in the Kingdom come back down. They're caught by a catcher, but that is out of play. Now, Tino Martinez, one ball and two strikes. Not going this time. Yeah, there's a few of those things can happen in the Kingdom. They have some speakers that could come into play also. And those of you who have seen games in the Astrodome and the Metrodome are aware of that. Stanley sets up on the outside corner. Down low, and nice pickup by Mike Stanley, who also did a good job behind the plate yesterday. There is the speaker that Jim Cott referred to, and the, Jimmy, let's talk about that. Well, the, most of them are in foul territory, and if it hits the speaker, of course, the ball's in play. You can catch it, and it's an out. Score. We're in the bottom of the second. Tino Martinez counts full. Edgar Martinez away from first. He's going. Last base hit to left field, but Edgar will hold at second. That's what's been impressive about this Mariner lineup. Tino Martinez. Getting better every day, uses the whole field. The other night they had the bases loaded and three straight hitters took the ball the opposite way, as Martinez does here. So now, Lou Pinella has a choice. He has a power hitter, 
Jay Buhner batting number six. He hasn't had a whole lot of RBI production from his bottom third. But the way Andy Bennis is throwing right now, does Panella want to play this and move the runners along? Let's find out. He is shocked if Buhner tried to bunt. And certainly not there, taking the strike right at the knees. In fact, the most dramatic game these two teams had, August 24th, David Cohn started. Buhner hit a first inning grand slam. That was the one Ken Griffey Jr. ended with a home run. Blocked, and runners cannot move up. Another good job by Stanley behind the plate. Now those little plays could be big in a game like this. Norm Charlton threw a few of those 56 foot fork balls yesterday that Dan Wilson had to block. And here Mike Stanley, you won't see it in the box score, but that keeps the runners from advancing. Would have been as good as a sacrifice. It's a ball on the strike. Great breaking ball. And if you ever watch any bowling on television, you know how that ball just bites and bites and then digs into the pocket the last few feet. That's what David Cohn's slider does. And he gets right up to the hitter and then bites hard. And that's why it's equally effective against lefties and righties. His first strikeout victim. Fellas to have around. Luis Soho got the big hit with the bases loaded against the California Angels in that one game playoff, which won the West for the Mariners. He'll give up the shortstop job next year to their Wonderkin, Alex Rodriguez, but who knows who will finish in that position. It's a long way to September and October in the baseball season, and uh, Soho is really a good man to have around. There's the youngster, he is active. Sitting next to the veteran Ken Griffey Jr., all of 25. <laughs> this is the man Lou Pinella would have liked to have had at the plate with nobody out. Soho with good ability to hit the ball the other way. If you look at him facially, remember the big red machine, he looks a lot like Davy Concepcion. Concepcion was his idol. Luis is from Venezuela, like Davy was. Same actions. Strikes the count, and now Edgar Martinez could score if one gets away and goes back toward the backstop. And Fernandez will slot in for a word to come. That somewhat nullifies the strikeout by Buhner. There's the spin on that breaking ball that Mike Stanley has to contend with. Fernandez checking with Stanley. They want to know what sign. Anytime you get a man on second, the sign sequence from the catcher will change. Tony wants to make sure he's got the right one. Cheetah step on the breaking ball. The Yankee infield with one out likes to play back here on the carpet. Boggs almost even with the bag. Maddie Lee is off of it against Soho, and the infielders are back. Of course, Edgar Martinez is not the swiftest of runners, and Soho hits one out of the air, drifting foul toward the Yankee dugout. That's a good situation for Buck Showalter when you talk about the infield. First of all, Cone is a fly ball pitcher, but if he were to hit a ground ball, it's lively turf that gets to the infielders in a hurry, and Edgar Martinez does not have good speed. Right. 
He's quieted this crowd down a little today, something no other Yankee pitcher was able to do yesterday. Emotionally drained after yesterday. But they'll be back. Two two and one out. Oh, swung on a bad one. Helped Cone out his second strikeout here in a row. Buner and Soho down, and up comes the number eight hitter, Danny Wilson. And a big strikeout. That's something David Cohn has been able to do in postseason play. Make good pitches with men in scoring position. He did not do that as well during the regular season. That's perfect spot. Up and in. No way Soho could get the barrel to it. Well, let's see if Pinella's lone lineup move pays off here. He jumped Wilson ahead of Blowers to bat eight. And wouldn't you know it, at the bottom of the second, Wilson comes up with runners on at second and third. Two fastballs just to give him the benefit of it. Off to a strong start. Two strikes. Two out. No score in the bottom of the second. It's a wonderful game, isn't it? One day it belongs to the hitters, and the next day it belongs to the pitchers. This buds for the Blues, the Reds, and the Warriors. This buds for the Giants the jazz, and the magic. This buds for the home team. No one but no one wants to go to Cleveland any more than George Steinbrenner, as you see behind Reggie Jackson there in the second row. Remember, that's where Steinbrenner is from. How great would it be for him to take this Yankee team in? Well, will they make it? Anyway, the first game, regardless of whether it's the Yankees or the Mariners, Tuesday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time, we'll have regional coverage of both the American League Championship Series and the National League. And congratulations go out, certainly to the Atlanta Braves and the Cincinnati Reds, the National League Series. Figures to be a great one. The Reds may be better than some of you think they are. Those of you who haven't had an opportunity to watch them recently. That is a loaded baseball team. Mike Stanley now steps in here at the bottom of the third. Yankees looking for a base runner. Just any indication that they can jump on Venice and put something together. I absolutely think that this crowd is emotionally drained. They are now in the third inning, one of the largest crowds in the history of the franchise. And you can actually hear somebody speak here for the first time in about three days. Short ground ball, base hit left field. The Yankees with their first base runner. Yeah, they'll need some of those double lattes uh, that they serve up here in Seattle today. They, there's no way a crowd could get up and down for four hours like they did yesterday. You see? Yeah, they're waiting. Mike Stanley, good low ball hitter, takes advantage of the turf. They didn't get through that infield in a hurry. Here in the kingdom. And now it's Tony Fernandez with a lot of big game experience. He was with the Blue Jays, batting left handed. Stanley away from first base. Might see a bunt here. Not indicating bunt that time, but he took a pitch for a strike. But Showalter uses the sacrifice bunt less than any manager in the American League, but this is a different game. Get David Cohn a run, things could be different. Flowers is in and on the line. Third base, you can see him just in case. Just a bit high, and uh, Jim Evans has been consistent up in there. He has not called that pitch a strike here yet. One ball and one strike now. We're in the top of the third inning. This is the Yankees and the Mariners with Jim Evans behind the plate. Andy Bennis on the mound. Andy Wilson's the catcher. This is game five. Slaps a ground ball to short. So hard. We're taking himself to fire. Thank you. 
Wilson sets up outside and it looked like Fernandez was trying to slap it to the left side and advance the runner. Soho comes in and can make that play by himself. The Mariner infield not one of the best in the field in the American League during the year but they've only made two er two errors here in the division series. That's amazing. That is the first ground ball double play that Bennis has recorded since he came from San Diego to Seattle. Is that an omen? Oh. <laughs> Like Cone, he's a fly ball pitcher and a strikeout pitcher. So Handy Randy, Bellardi, Wilson backing away, backhands it. Picking up a slap shot, reaching over there with a big hockey glove. Ball on the strike now with two out here at the top of the third. Sort of building slow here today, isn't it, folks? Oh, yes. Get picked up in a hurry, though. It's that count. Anytime it reaches two strikes, they're ready. High and out of play. You mentioned Randy Velarde, the all purpose player. He plays left, third, short, second, and he and Don Mattingly are the only two Yankees left over from when Lou Pinella managed the Yankees. Back in the 80s. The captain, his first postseason competition. Malardi ready now. One ball, two strikes, and two out. Check swing, foul ball. This is an interesting umpiring crew. Jim Evans, like Joe Brinkman, down the uh, left field line, both crew chiefs. And they were all relaxed down the lot watching NFL football with great sports fans, except for Evans. He was all alone with his thoughts. Well, they prepare probably feel tension like the players do in big games like this. This is where you earn your salary if you're a major league umpire, right there behind the plate. I said to Rocky, I said, Rocky, Jim and I only had to really second guess you. On one pitch yesterday. He looked up, he said, Well, my, my wife had me on four. <laughs> he had a good day. Yes, he did. Two, two, and two out now. Yes, he had that. Still scoreless in Seattle. Well, a very unusual play featuring Don Mattingly yesterday because he made a little bit of a mental blunder. Ordinarily, he's one of the finest first basemen around. We're going to take you back to game four. Randy Velarde, first of all, the second baseman, made the first mistake, not flipping to Fernandez. But then Mattingly said, I never should have thrown that ball. Went into center field. That allowed the Mariners to score the tying run. Number nine hitter. Mike Flowers. Stepping in for the Mariners like Jay Buhner. Spent some time with the New York Yankees. Has not been making enough contact to satisfy Panella so far in this playoff series. Top of the order is next. Right there. When he does make contact, he's one of those guys that uh, gets almost an RBI for every hit. He had 113 hits during the year, 96 RBIs. That's a pretty good ratio. Jimmy, so far Cohn is doing an excellent job of painting that outside corner. Like that. I mean, David Cohn is a stuff pitcher, but then when he has the pinpoint control to go with the stuff, that's why the Yankees got him for games like this. Last 0 and 2, he wasted one. Breaking ball, wouldn't you think? You wonder on David Cohn, he doesn't look like a uh, large physical specimen, but he gets a lot of 
leverage from those legs. He'll rock. He'll almost rise up when he makes that turn. Gets a little locked into that motion. Now there is the difference right there in the game today in the game of about 15 to 20 years ago that pitch there's the rock see the head will actually go up and then down toward the hitter but that was a hanging breaking ball that Blowers took a very hittable pitch but hitters today like the ball down in the zone 2 2 from Cone. So many of them with that open stance like flowers when they shut it down you'd want to saw them off inside that they couldn't handle that good pitch on the inside corner. But it's not where they start it's where they finish and like Buner from the open stance he will stride into the ball and get in a closed position. Get high and playable. Paul O'Neill. No deal. Coming off a big moment yesterday when he watched his Buckeyes come from behind and beat Penn State. Grew up in Columbus, Ohio. Huge Ohio State fan. That ball looked like it was close to one of those outfield speakers. As we talked about that. All right, play fact. Ken Griffey Jr. hit one early in the year off the speaker into the third deck for a home run. <laughs> Got a contrast in the top of these batting. Wade Boggs and Bernie Williams, 300 hitters that don't uh, use their speed. They do some damage. Coleman and Cora at the top of the Mariner lineup slap the ball, steal bases, hit and run. And Boggs in a couple of steps. Good eye, man. See Wade, third base, directly in front of that white line. You know it's, it's interesting you certainly can remember decisive games at the Metrodome in Minneapolis where it was never quiet here subdued sort of on their hands waiting for something to happen three one and one out it's the kind of sound the Yankees hope continues this one playable again. Williams shallow center field and that's the second out a lot of anticipation in the crowd waiting for something to happen. So the Giants pull one out in OT the Woeful Jets lose again. Seattle's football team struggling while the baseball team's fortunes soar Tampa Bay by a field goal and how about the job that Tom Coughlin is doing with the Jaguars in Jacksonville. Troy Aikman comes back early. And an overtime big win for the Eagles. This is Joey Cora. And he is up there with two out. Now, what's important about this out right now? You see the Bears score and another overtime game in the NFL. What's important is Cone gets him. And this one's deep to right field. O'Neill goes back. It's deep, deep. And Joey Cora. Inside corner. I was all set. Let me complete the sentence. 
was so important about that out is hey you can get Griffey up with nobody on. Right. Guess what folks he's up with nobody on. <laughs> but, but you're down the one. The are up by one. Bad pitch. Griffey helped him out that time. And he's down no balls and two strikes with two out. There's another free agent signing that Woody Woodward the general manager signed that uh, has strengthened this ball club Joey Cora playoff experience with the White Sox two years ago. Oh get down there man. Nobody's safe when the heart of this order comes up. Sam Mejias the first base coach Lou Pinella brought him over from Cincinnati. More like that, he'll be scratching gray hair up there. 0 oh, 2 and 2 now to the kid. Wow. Well, you can see down in that bullpen area, and the California Angels are going to be interested in what I'm about to tell them. Because they had that ball by Soho go in underneath that bench down there, and Soho came all the way around the bases. Anything going down there in this series, stopping underneath, is going to be an automatic ground rule double. Missing inside against Griffin. That ground rule was altered prior to the start of the series by this umpiring crew in agreement with the two managers. One ball and two strikes. What a past and what a future. Baseball is to regain its fans, its players, and Ken Griffey Jr. will bring them back. Two-two. Hit in the air to right field, but this one is playable. And with all these great players, it's Joey Cora who hits the first home run. Back with more after this from our ABC stations. We'll meet again. Don't know where. Don't know when. But I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Division Series game is brought to you by Network MCI. How to get modern communications technology working for your business. Buick and your local dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush life. We start the fourth inning. The Mariners won. The Yankees nothing. And the top of the Yankee lineup. Second time around for Wade Boggs. And what impresses you so far about Andy Bennis? Uh, the, the fact that he's aggressive early in the count. Other times I've seen him, he's been a little tentative falling behind. But this will be a key go around for Bennis because Boggs is the hitter that the Yankee lineup looks at. He sees a pitcher once, they go up with a little different thought. He comes back to the bench, they work him into deeper counts. Hit to left field, Vince Coleman drifting over, measures it. So that again, Brent, is what's impressive about Bennis. Boggs was not able to take him to a deep count. He's getting ahead and making the pitcher's pitches to put him away. Jim, I know you spent some time with Lou Pinella, and uh, what about Randy Johnson? Is he available at all today? He, if the Mariners have a lead and Norm Charlton is out of the game or not pitching effectively, you will see him for maybe one inning at the most. So here's Bernie Williams against Bennis. Yes, he did. First back. Well, there's that Evans did not hesitate in asking him on that too. Some umpires will take their time before they go down there, but uh, Evans gets a quick call from the third base umpire. There's that check swing on the down and away pitch that is uh, going to be so important. We'll see John Hirschbeck involved in a lot of those. Now with a one-run lead, this the decisive Game Five. Winner moves on to the American League Championship Series against the Cleveland Indians. 
Jim, let me go back on that point. Why do you think the Indians, other than the obvious, uh, the home field, want to play the Yankees? Well, they, they respect both ball clubs, but if they have to come in here with this hostile crowd, they'll look at Randy Johnson probably in game one. If they play the Yankees, David Cohn will not start game one. Neither will Jack McDowell. 2 1 now to Bernie. Missing outside. Of course, McDowell will be available in the bullpen today, as will the. It'll be Johnny Holstaff if the starter can't hold him. He'd be available, and if the Yankees win it, probably Andy Pettit, their fine rookie left hander, would start game one. And Jack McDowell would be available for two, but he also is available today if they need him in an emergency. And Bernie Williams has coached a walk off Venice, and a reminder of what's coming up. Tomorrow night on ABC. Start off with the Marshall. Jeff Fahey in a brand new episode. Then NFL Monday Night Football. Al and Dan and Frank will take you along with Lynn Swan to the San Diego Chargers and the Kansas City Chiefs. 9 Eastern Time. Should be a good football game. Great setting down there in Kansas City for an NFL game. It's a little bit like a college setting and wasn't yesterday. Something around the college arena. My, oh my. Now Paul O'Neill in for his second at bat. One out and Bernie on at first base. O'Neill saw a lot of Venice in the National League and he hits him well. 350, almost a 350 career average. Sends him to the dirt. Yankees don't steal off. Bernie Williams, a great center fielder. Good all around athlete, but he does not have good base stealing instincts. That's why he's not been able to utilize that speed as well. The Yankees like the sacrifice bunt. They also steal less than any team in the American League. Neil hoping to sting the Mariners again. He does. Look out. O'Neill's got one out of here. Put it on the scoreboard, and the Yankees bounce ahead on O'Neill's home run. There is a tradition that uh, perhaps started at Wrigley Field. So that was the first place where I was ever aware of it. That uh, never keep the enemy's home run souvenirs. Send it on back. It's been a tradition for the Yankees in this series. Paul O'Neill with two run homers. He hit the two run homer yesterday to give them a five nothing lead. And now, again, he continues to hit Venice well like he did in the National League. Got on top of that high fastball. And Ruben Sierra with one to Griffey in center field. And Griffey makes the put out for the second out, swinging away quickly at that first pitch. Venice now hesitating before he brings it home. And now Don Mattingly will step up with the Yankees leading for the first time 2 1 here in the top of the fourth inning. In that classic back in the Bronx, Yankees came from behind four times. That a postseason record. Here they have jumped from behind for the first time. Lines one. Duner has to come in on it quickly. Makes the play. The Yankees jump ahead on Paul O'Neill's home run. Yesterday, the Mariners were back five when Edgar Martinez slammed his first home run, a three-run shot. The regular season numbers, he deserves to be ranked with all the other MVP wow. candidates. First or second in those top six. Look at the odd base percentage. Led the league in hitting. And in walks of Movon and Albert Bell, the other MVP candidate, Edgar's the only one that walks more than he strikes out. Consistent contact. He is the most valuable hitter, best hitter in the league. Works with weights. He's bulked up. You see the strength of his forearms. The hitting specialist has not missed a game this year. Played in more games than anybody in the major leagues. Remember. That playoff game against the Angels counts as a regular season game. So Edgar Martinez in 145 games, and of course he has now appeared in all five of these divisional series games. Baseball. 
high. Did not get it. And Don Mattingly drifts into foul territory for the put out. And a sigh of relief from Yankee fans everywhere. That's quite an accomplishment. And not many teams, no team, I don't think, in the major leagues can boast they have the best pitcher in the league, Randy Johnson, the best hitter in the league, Edgar Martinez, and when healthy, the best all around player in the league, Ken Griffey Jr. They got all three right here in Seattle. So it's Tino Martinez up for the second time, and the Mariners trailing the Yankees in game five by one. By Tino. One of the things about David Cohn, Jim, you and I were talking, he is not predictable as a human being, which makes him a little tricky out there on the, <laughs> on the, on the pitching rub. Well, David has really matured as a person as well as a player, but when you look in his eyes and talk to him, he has a little bit of that, you know, they say left-handers are a little off now. He has a little, there's a little uncertainty. And that's what makes him an outstanding pitcher. He has made the most out of free agency and contracts expiring. A hired gun and a good one at that. Toronto. Kansas City, Toronto, now game five after, of course, being with the New York Mets and appearing series, championship series against the Dodgers. Lashed foul down that oh, line. Look out. And that shot of his eyes. I mean, he is the kind of guy, and he's so savvy with the media, very sharp, that he he could walk up to you with that kind of a look and just say, I'm gonna hit you right in the ribs. You know, and you'd say, no. And then all of a sudden, I mean, he, he doesn't have that look. But he has that toughness. 2 2 now. Breaking ball fouled away. It's exactly what Tino Martinez said. I said, What makes David Cohn tough? He said, That slider, he'll break it in on my hands, and all I can do is pull it foul, and then he'll backdoor it. He'll throw it on the outside corner or throw the splitter out there. Three strikeouts so far. Last toward the gap in left center field. It's got it. It's off the wall now. And Tino takes the turn and he'll pull up with a double. That is some kind of hitting. In a two strike situation, really covers the plate as so many of the Mariner hitters do. Pitch is in a good spot. And Martinez goes down and gets it and drives it with some authority. I think Cohn was shocked because it was such a good pitch. Now Jay Buhner struck him out. He has fanned three so far. One out with Tino away from second and now. Uh, Steps away to make sure he does not take off that extra step. Ball arrives in the fielder's hands quickly on this carpet. If you can keep somebody just a step closer, you give an outfielder a chance to cut him down at home plate. All the little things now important. Did he go? Did not. Dan Morrison, the first base umpire. Talked about more hitters being low ball hitters. Jay Buhner's a good example. Why are they? You see him carry that bat straight up and down. Hitters use lighter bats. And it's easier to drop the barrel on a low pitch from that position. Two in oh. As Yankee fans are certainly aware, I guess in Toronto and Kansas City and Met fans are aware too. Cone will walk quite a few hitters, and so far here in this game five, he hasn't walked anybody, but he's behind in the count. Two balls and no strikes now. And he gets away to the backstop, and the Mariners have the time run 90 feet away. Buck 
says play the infield back but David Cohn is pitching Buhner almost like an intentional walk with the bottom of the order coming up he doesn't want to give him anything to drive trying to protect that one run lead. So now let's see what he elects to do here with three balls and no strikes on Buhner. One out. Some respect. Looked like a 3 0 breaking ball. Looks like a character out of a Dostoyevsky novel. Jay Beener walking down a street in Kiev. Lashes one base hit. This game is tied. Shatters his back and still gets enough on it. Like Blowers, a lot of hits, a lot of RBIs per hit. 123 hits during the year and 121 ribbies for Buner. So the broken bat Buner single ties the score at two, bottom of the fourth inning. This a decisive game five. Winner moves on to take on Cleveland for the American League Championship. Soho as the throw goes over to Mattingly at first base. Lou Pinella, like the Mariners, is so loose before the game. He said, Hey, we've had a great year. You know, if we lose, I got a lot of golf shorts packed away. I'll go play some golf. And he's going to gamble a little more. Soho looking right now for the sign. You could expect a, a hit and run with Soho in the batter's box. Picked off in a hit and run situation. The wheels turn. Line drive right at Malardi at second. But Buner alertly did not stray too far. Two out now. Danny Wilson up. You're looking at Buner, uh, Buner there, Brent. You talked about his. Uh, his figure, his persona. They had a Buner haircut out here in Seattle and drew quite a crowd. He takes that helmet off, completely bald. Talking with Mattingly, because of course he is a former Yankee. Andy Wilson now with two out and Buner away from first. The one thing that a base runner for the Mariners has to be extremely aware of is with that biting slider. If it gets away again, you must alertly move with it. But you've got to be careful that Stanley doesn't make a stop and he's got a shot at it. Sign, he's going to get the hit sign. One of the things Dan Wilson has known as good catcher has improved his hitting. And now three and zero oh with two out and Buter on at first. This would allow the Mariners to put their nine hitter up here at the bottom of this inning. And then if he can't do anything, they'd move right away to the top. So they would dearly love to get Wilson on base here. And Cone dearly wants to do otherwise. And 
Sunflower seeds continue to disappear in the Yankee dugout. Three and one now with two out. Line drive, base hit in front of Bernie Williams. Gary will move to second. The improved stroke of Dan Wilson, 278 this year with nine ribbies. A lot of help from Lou Pinella and Lee Delia. These Mariner hitters use the whole field so well, and they're hitting some pretty good pitches. Now Buehner leading the way from second. There are two out in the bottom of the fourth. The Yankees two, Mariners two. Ready to stand in. Randy Johnson far left in the Mariner dugout. Game face on in case they need him late. Good look at breaking ball right there. Hey, you saw the graphic Blowers over 13. That's a reason. Not many right handers can. Get that breaking ball. The Mariners are very adept at stealing sides. Stanley, Cohn, the Yankees are also aware of it. Outside and low. Kind of day. Has been that kind of month in Seattle and also back in New York. Both of these teams pounded down the stretch, worked hard to get into the playoffs. Beautiful fastball. Yeah, pitch counts and how do you feel go out the window today. Everybody's available. David Cohn averages more innings per start than any pitcher in the major league, so you can depend on him for at least seven. Well, they didn't work long last year. They should have a lot yeah. left this fall. And a short season this year. Okay. One, two, with two out. Lotter's ready. You are away from second. Once a decade, you hope that works. <laughs> two on, flowers at that. One, two. Game five, deadlock. On the ground, but at Fernandez here. Take it alone for the third out, but the Mariners. Score once through four, it's 2 2. With Jim Codd and Jack Aroot, I'm Brent Musburger. Welcome you to Game 5. Winner moves on to the American League Championship Series against the Cleveland Indians. Stage is set in the National League. They go into Cincinnati, the Atlanta Braves, and the Cincinnati Reds. And everybody with the same sentiments in New York and Seattle, bring on the Indians. And you're going to get them, one of you, and they're going to be tough. They've had a great, great season. Deion James now stands in against Andy Bennis. They'd like to see this go about 15 innings. They have their pitchers well rested. Dennis Martinez, the Bulldog, Earl Hershiser, and Charles Nagy. They're all ready to go. Slaps one. Tino Martinez with the put out. Mike Stanley. One for one. If this is the first time that you have been able to watch any of the Yankees and the Mariners, this is absolutely the quietest 
it has ever been in the kingdom since about 505 Friday night. Everybody just sitting and waiting. Ground ball to third. Flowers. To Eighteenth time these two teams have met this year. And the Mariners have handled them during the regular season. As you see, Blowers handle that play easily. The Mariners are seven and one here in the kingdom. Yeah, it has not been a pleasant summer and fall on the left coast for the New York Yankees. Tony Fernandez takes a strike. This eight game losing streak came to an end here in the kingdom. Toward the gap in right center field. Fernandez on the run. He's got it between Griffey and Buhner. Griffey will run it down, and Fernandez into second with a double. Second baseman number 18, Randy Bellardi. That quieted this kingdom crowd down as Tony Fernandez. Takes it right off the shoe tops. I don't think Jay Buhner tracked this ball well. He ran a little bit of a flag pattern. And Ken Griffey Jr., you can see him looking at Buhner, waiting to see if he could catch it. Makes a nice bare hand grab and gets it into the infield in a hurry. Just out of Buhner's reach. Not sure that even if Buhner did reach it, that he would have been able to stop Fernandez from going to second base. It was pretty well hit into the gap in right center field here in the kingdom. At any rate, Fernandez on at second now with the two out double, and it's Randy Villardi. Hit in the air, drifting over toward the Yankee dugout. Wilson, he's got it. A Yankee left at second. Still tied at two. Well, there's a lot of talk and controversy about a new stadium out here in Seattle. Back on July 19th of 1994, some acoustical tiles fell. Al Ripken at the time was right underneath the seats doing a radio interview. And then unfortunately, tragically, a couple of gentlemen died working when they repaired the roof of the kingdom and uh, Jack Aru, what's the latest on the possibility of a new stadium here. Well Brent the Seattle the Mariners have actually said that it's October 30th is the deadline for a decision and there's two major decisions that have to be made this week. A secret finance plan for the two hundred eighty five million dollars forty five million of which the Mariners said they will put up for a retractable dome stadium is supposed to be released to the legislature on Wednesday. If it isn't killed outright then the governor says he'll call a special session on Thursday. But they got to know by October 30th. Well, if you build it, we will come. And one other thing, folks, if you feel the winning team, we'll come wherever you play. Boy, isn't that the truth? Vince Coleman now stands in here to lead off the bottom of the fifth inning. Deadlocked at two for the Yankees, two runs on three hits. And for the Mariners, two runs on six hits. Coleman has not yet been on base. Resurrecting his career here with the Mariners. Check swing, but right to Fernandez. Well, here is Joey Cora, and let's turn you back now to the bottom of the third inning. It was scoreless. And Joey Cora, who homered three times during the regular season. Put the Mariners on the board first. Then Paul O'Neill regained the lead for the Yankees. The Mariners have now tied it. We are in the bottom of the fifth inning. One out and Cora back up. Man, he 
doesn't want to walk. And he hasn't walked any yet. Got the call there. That's the first low strike that has been turned in here in this game. Two one on court. Popped it up. So this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent for the Office of the Commissioner. First two hitters are out. And Ken Griffey, who has yet to bat in this game with anybody on base, comes back in. He's 0 for 2. Pitching style. All fly balls and strikeouts, no ground outs. Interesting to watch an outstanding pitcher the way he moves the ball around, up and in, out and low, down by the knees, on the inside corner, then to the outside corner. Hard to pick up a pattern. And they've tried to find a pattern on Griffey and Martin. You see Cone shrugging his shoulders out there like he's a little stiff. That move back across the inside edge. It's cool in here. Lou Pinella mentioned the other night when he removed Randy Johnson after a long uh, Mariner inning is that you tend to stiffen up a little bit in the air uh, with the air conditioning. We saw David Cohn trying to make sure he stayed low. He's loose, Lou Pinella, and he'd be available for one inning if necessary today. One, two. Through five, Yankees two, Mariners two. UCLA, that's all next Saturday at College Football Doubleheader. Here it is. The Yankees and the Mariners are tied at two apiece. And the top of the lineup, Wade Boggs will lead it off here in the sixth inning. Yesterday belonged to the hitters, and today a good old fashioned pitcher's duel between Andy Bennis and David Cohn. Key inning for Bennis and the Yankees for that matter, because when Boggs moved into the leadoff spot on August 4th and Bernie Williams into the two hole, they both hit about 360 from that point on. At the knees. That is what really has set up the Yankee offense. There's the signal. Baseball fans that have followed Boggs knows he you know he is as dangerous with two strikes as any hitter in baseball. Now Bernie 
Bernie Williams and the Mariners bring a lot of respect into this game for Bernie but watch this beautiful placement by Bennis after the first inning strikeout with the fastball Bennis gets him on the back door slider right on the outside corner. Magnificent series and a great future with the Yankees. Career highs this year 18 home runs and 82 RBIs during the season. Now when you have center fielders like Ken Griffey Jr. Kenny Lofton who will be in the championship series Devon White tough to get a lot of recognition but Bernie Williams is a good one. A walk to Williams set up Venice's problem against O'Neill the last time and now Bernie again ahead in the count. It's two and one. like the fans are saying hey maybe we can win this thing they're a lot quieter today anticipating three and one hi and Williams again walks which sets the table for Paul O'Neill who has slammed three home runs against the Mariners in this series so far including this one in the top of the fourth inning, which put the Yankees ahead two to one. Bottom of the inning, the Mariners tied it up, and that's where we are again. One out, Williams again perched on at first base, and here comes the rematch. Much lower than the home run pitch, wasn't it? Paul O'Neill hits into more double plays than any hitter in the American League, but as you mentioned, Andy Bennis got his first double play grounder as a Mariner this game. He didn't throw a lot of ground balls. There are a lot of organizations paying very close attention to Andy Bennis as a free agent. Come up big in a very meaningful game. The scouts pay attention. And he has shown a lot of poise out there so far. Gone from the aggressive style the first five innings to a little defensive now, as we've seen David Cohn in a couple of situations. When you realize one bad pitch can cost you the ball game, Bobby Cuellar. Who's done a nice job as the Mariner pitching coach? Probably just a, a trip to encourage Bennis to uh, go back to what he was doing the first few innings. They throw strikes. You were successful getting ahead. You mentioned uh, Bennis and such an important start for him. He's accustomed to tight games coming from the Padres. He didn't get a lot of run support. The Mariners usually score about seven for him. He's also accustomed to quiet crowds. <laughs> you can see on the graphic why Bernie Williams is not an excellent base stealer. It's two balls and no strikes. One out. Williams is on at first. And it's three and zero. Oh. And I think he'll have the green light, Paul O'Neill. Some hitters, if you give them the green light on three, they have a tendency to, to overswing. O'Neill's not apt to do that. And he's walking out of the box right now, I think, to think about a zone that he would like to see a fastball in. And Buck Showalter will turn him loose. Two on, back to back walks. Williams and O'Neill, and here comes Ruben Sierra, who is way overdue to do something for the Bombers. A 
huge double in the 12th inning of that 15 inning classic back in the Bronx but rather quiet since then and Cuellar on the phone there's activity in Pinellas bullpen down the left field line they will not wait that's the pitcher he got that key double Tim Belcher Norm Charlton would be available. One thing the Yankees have not done since game one when Sierra hit the two run homer is produce with men in scoring position. One strike. One out. Tie game. Designated hitter Ruben Sierra of the New York Yankees. And he asked for time. Game one, 500, five for 10. But since that, look, the Yankees just four for 25. Discussion right now with Wilson and Bennis and American League scouts and players have followed Ruben Sierra. He is a one zone hitter. I mean, if you can keep it on the outside corner, he has a lot of trouble reaching it. But with that high leg kick, he's very dangerous. Anything on the inside two thirds. in the stadium. After Sierra homered, it was Mattingly, then the garbage, then Canelo pulled the team, and a change of pitchers. Now Venice looks at the Sierra. One one of one out, two Yankees on. Game is tied. Even though his record seven and two as a Mariner, his earned run average, the highest in American League history for a pitcher, five games over 500, almost six. It's 3 1 from Venice to Sierra. Two Yankees on, and the score is tied. And the bases are loaded on three walks, and Lou Pinella now with a decision to make. Yankees have seven left hand hitters in the lineup, and the one thing Lou Pinella wishes he had was another left hand pitcher. He's instructing his infielders right now hey, if it's hit hard, take two the conventional way. If it's not, come home. But Norm Charlton wouldn't be available till inning seven or eight. So the Yankees with those left hand bats have an edge. So it builds to one of those early climaxes. The captain, John Mattingly, with the bases loaded and one out here. Slaps one into left field, down into that corner. It's fair. The Yankees will score. It's a ground rule double. Yankees lead it by two. Don Mattingly's ground rule double to left field scores Williams and O'Neill, and the Yankees jump up 4-2. Nothing could be more fitting for Yankee fans. Their captain, who was bashed all season long for an unproductive bat, gets exactly what he's known for a double. Only Lou Gehrig has more in Yankee history. And off that high turf, a ground rule double that probably prevented Sierra from scoring. That bounces off the left field fence. Sierra would have been able to score on that. Deion James will be intentionally walked to reload the bases. 
Mike Stanley is due up and you would have to think that uh, Pinella is giving strong consideration to bring in Belcher on to face the right hander but let's see well because you, you mentioned Bennis only is one double play grounder in the time he's been with the Mariners and uh, that's what the Mariners are looking for so you would anticipate Belcher coming in to try to get the ground ball. Mike Stanley comes up Brent there are very few hitters in baseball that have had the production with the bases loaded like Mike Stanley. Yankees four Mariners two at the top of the sixth inning one out at the moment George very happy with how things are unfolding right now. Mike Stanley batted 18 times. Jimmy, you mentioned this. Came to the plate 18 times. The bases loaded during the regular season for the Yorkers. And he was 9 for 11. That's 818. He hit two grand slam home runs. And he walked four times. Gerald Williams going in to run for Deion James. He'll go out to left field. And Lou Pinella, who is a bit of a riverboat gambler, has decided to stick with Bennis. Good fastball. I think Pinella's thinking is Bennis has a better chance of striking out Stanley than Belcher. Not as much looking for the double play as the strikeout. Drifting foul ground down the right field line and into the seats away from Buner who was giving chase. The balls and two strikes. Sierra is the runner at third. Mattingly with his two run doubles at second. Gerald Williams, the pitch runner at first. Going to the count. Trademark of this Yankee lineup and their hitting coach Rick Down. They do not chase a lot of pitches. Very disciplined up and down the lineup as you saw Stanley lay off those two borderline pitches and take a deep breath. Challenge for a pitcher. You'd like to get a double play ball, and you have to do that with a low pitch. Mike Stanley is a low ball hitter. Probably the reason he's had a lot of success with the bases loaded. Pitcher shot pitching low, get the double play. the count. And 
and Stanley works the count back full. As Bennis gets the fastball up, borderline pitch, you can't afford to take that at 3 2 if you're Mike Stanley. Not a lot of room back there, but enough room for Dan Wilson. Big Mariner out. Fernandez. Two out now. Fernandez will attempt to keep it in play, just slap it somehow. He has most RBIs in postseason. Other than three fellows, can you name them? Think about it. Who would have had more postseason RBIs? Yankee fans have got one, Bucky Dent. Bill Russell with the Dodgers, Pee Wee Reese with the Dodgers, the other two. Fernandez with 13 and trying to get more right now. Two balls and no strikes. Interesting choice here if you're Tony Fernandez and he's an experienced enough hitter to make up his own mind. Bennis is struggling. He's thinking do I make him throw a strike or guess fastball and take a rip at it. It's it high toward the seats and out of play. This is when the sixth inning becomes the ninth inning for Andy Bennis. And out here, Mariners have a chance. A hit, David Cohn would be tough to beat. Two balls and one strike. Yankees with the bases loaded and a two run lead here at the top of the sixth inning. For the Blues, the Reds, and the Warriors. This buds for the Giants, the Jazz, and the Magic. This buds for the home team.
Welcome back to the Kingdom in Seattle. It's 4 2 the Yankees leading the Mariners right now with Jim Cotter and Brad Musburger. Jim at the top of our broadcast, we talked about the heart of the matter. Yep. The heart of those two batting lineups. And right now, the Yankees have the advantage. O'Neill and Mattingly, two RBIs apiece. So the heart of the Yankee order has done their job. And it's the heart right now for the Mariners. David Cohn knows that. Key inning for him, just like it was for Bennis in the top of this inning. And Edgar Martinez leading off. One for two. Seven RBIs yesterday. A two run lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Tino Martinez, who's up next with a pair of base hits off home so far. Good looking breaking ball. Saw that sign, Edgar. And like Reggie Jackson knows when he played in New York, that's what the Mariner fans, because there are two Martinez. Chanted on the way out of the kingdom last night. Boggs and Martinez, two of the best hitters in baseball. And what Boggs really admires is Martinez's ability to recognize pitches. Even though Cohn has an outstanding slider, Martinez can recognize it, wait on it, and hit it. One, two. There's that area you referred to, Brent. Brinkman made sure it did not go underneath the bench. And it did not, even though the outfielder was immediately putting up his hand, asking for it to be out of play, which is what a smart outfielder will do in any situation, trying to put the burden on the umpire. But Brinkman was all over. It didn't matter anyway, because Edgar Martinez wasn't going any further than second base. But Cone now must face his nemesis, Tino Martinez. With the Mariner on at second, and the crowd is about ready to wake up in Seattle. First pitch strike. Save a lot of pitching over here, won't it? And get a lot of hitters out. That's strike one. Popped up behind the plate. Stanley can't get it. It's back into the crowd. More than any pitcher in the major league. He can average seven and two thirds innings. Looking at the bottom of the six with a two one lead. They're hoping that all that practice and spring training and all the pickoff plays would pay off in this kind of a situation. What a bowl that would be for the Mariners.
first inning. That's why Tino Martinez has had these two good at bats and two hits against David Cohn. He tries to get him to chase the breaking ball down and in. Nice block by Stanley to get over there. Just missed his back leg. And then he's gone back outside, but Tino's been covering the plate. Tino didn't want to take one for the team in the foot. No. He wants to hit. One, two now. Nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth. Him that time and foul ball into the ground. Evans with the call immediately. That's going to bring Buck Showalter out of the dugout. Just to get an explanation, you mentioned, Brent, that Jim Evans has been in the center of a couple of controversial calls. You sure about that? See if we can read those lips. Evans say, yeah, hit the ground. It popped up in the glove. He didn't catch it cleanly. The tapes. <laughs> yeah, it clearly play. hit the dirt first. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Edgar Martinez away from second. And Tino asks for a little time. Not automatic when a hitter turns around and asks for time, but in most situations, the umpire will give it to a hitter. Two two now. Cohen looks in at Stanley. Did he go? Got him out finally. So this division series game is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. The employees of Trans World Airlines were up to something good. And Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Gets Martinez, Cone does on that sharp biting slider that he cannot check his swing on. One out, and here's Buter. Boy, every hitter will tell you when they get back to the bench, each at bat you get one hittable pitch. Jay Buter's walking around night right now saying, I got mine and I fouled it straight back. Right down the chute. Just missed it. Probably won't see another one in that zone. Not the way David Cohn's been moving his pitches around. Oh. Rode it past him that time. Cone's pitch count well over 100. He doesn't care. He'll lay it all out there today, but if it comes down to a battle of bullpens, big plus for the Yankees. The only folks counting living back in Cleveland. 0 right. oh, 2 and 1 now. Ooh, that was a good looking pitch, and he got it. He went too far. First base umpire Danny Morrison punches him out. Check swings have been very important. Here is the definitive view. And as you can see, Morrison was all over it. What'd you think? Well, the, the umpire looks at did he intend? Was the intent there to swing? And it appeared from that angle that Buner held up. That is probably as tough a call as a base umpire yeah, has to make. There's the Jay Buner haircut that. Uh, they love here in Seattle. I mentioned the bullpens, Brent. The reason the Yankees have a big plus. Wetland is fresh. Wickman, McDowell, if necessary, and Pettit. But on the Mariners' side, not the same situation. There's the uh, Yankee bullpen is 
Nardi Contreras, Bob Wickman seated there. Nardi Contreras walking out to the mound right now just to give Cohn a little breather. Norm Charlton, as uh, Lou Pinella said, is pitching on fumes. They would only use Randy Johnson if they had the lead. And Jeff Nelson, with four great innings yesterday, really enabled the Mariners to win the game. Jimmy, let me uh, remind everybody what we got a moment as we look at Charlton down there about uh, Monday Night Football. This could be a good game. The Chargers are at Kansas City to play the Chiefs. That's 9 Eastern time. And uh, by my unofficial count, there were four overtime games in the National Football League. Today, the Eagles with a win, Minnesota with a victory, Indianapolis coming back on Miami after being down, and the Giants. So, this could be a huge day for the Tri State metropolitan area back in New York. The Yankees can follow it up now. That's the Deacon, Warren Newsom, pinch hitting for the Mariners. This has been an outstanding pinch hitting team this year. Immediately jumps ahead of one. Newsom with the White Sox in 93. He's got some postseason experience. Teammate of Jack McDowell. Two out. Edgar Martinez on at second base. Gave him the inside corner that time. He's painting with power right now. Breaking ball on the outside edge and a blazer on the inside corner. Move just across the edge of the plate. He has jumped ahead 0-2. Nice pickup by Stanley on the short hop. Did his holes at second. David Cohn is dictating now a two run lead through six back with more after this from our ABC stations. Well there's a summary of what we have had so far here with David Cohn ahead by a pair of runs. Lauren O'Neill with home runs. Dennis still in the game. And we have a. Uh, Don Mattingly two run double. And you can see that the Mariners have been quiet considerably here with a change at shortstop. Soho was taken out for the pinch hitter and a former Indian. Felix Fermain has moved in at shortstop here. For Mariner, the Mariners. Mariner fans at the banners out welcome home Omar if the Mariners would play the Indians. Of course, Fermain was traded for the Gold Glove shortstop Omar Vizquel. This probably be a one. Batter inning for Bennis. All the lefties coming up. Charlton getting ready in the bullpen. You mentioned a while ago, Brent, what strike one can do for you, and that's what Bennis did the first few innings, but since then he has fallen behind and he's paid for it. It's two and one. Right there. This is a crowd which obviously is accustomed to cheering for Randy Johnson. <laughs> I mean, on two strikes, it's been the only time that they have risen to the fifth game occasion today. 3 2 now. Yes, sir. Ironic that they stand with two strikes because that started in the late 70s when a Yankee would get two strikes on a hitter. Ron Guidry painted the outside corner with the fastball, and Pinella's going to stay with him. He's 
done a good job against Boggs, striking him out twice here today. It's the next hit that he has really struggled with. And what's interesting about Boggs, you were talking about his bat control, everyone very well aware of how difficult he is to strike out. In fact, he struck out three times in a game only once in the last five years, and that was back in August of 1993. Down one alone. Hosted 100 postseason games. That's an all time high. Which stadium now has hosted the second most games during postseason play? I'm going to give you a hint. I think you need one on this, folks. John McGraw would have had the answer to this one. And we will give you the answer in the next inning. And now here comes the hitter who has set the table in this decisive game five. With two walks, he has scored twice. Bennis has gotten too fine with Bernie Williams. Big difference in the game. Yankees only have four hits. Cole has given up seven, but he hasn't walked anyone. It's been the walks that have hurt Andy Bennis. Two run lead. What's interesting about Cohn dictating now? And I don't have to remind Yankee fans of John Wetland's record here in the kingdom, not only in the regular season, but also yesterday. I suppose if there's any second guess you want to offer up for Showalter's managing yesterday, it'll be the fact that he yanked Wickham and went to Wetland in the first place. But that doesn't tell us what might have happened if he hadn't changed pitchers, does it? I think it's a legitimate second guess to question as long as you say, but we're not sure. That they wouldn't have hit the other fella either. As long as you do that, it's okay to talk about it. It's two balls and one strike now. And he has been the ace out of that pin all year. You have to have confidence in him getting any hitter out, but he's not been able to get Griffey out. Two on and two now. Well, we're a pitch away from having, uh, for the fourth time, a confrontation between two Cincinnati teammates, Charlton and O'Neill. Patience has been a virtue for Bernie Williams of the Yankees. The third time that he has walked. And that will be the end of the workday for Andy Bennis. Steve Norm Charlton strolling in. We'll be right back. So the confrontation again between Charlton and O'Neill, and it has been one of the duels that could wind up deciding this championship series. Back in the stadium, the 15 inning classic, O'Neill rode one out. It was the only bad pitch that Charlton would make that night, and it denied the Mariners a win. But back here in the Kingdom, it was Charlton this time, and the Mariners stayed alive. Now they come back to game five, but the Yankees are up by two big runs. Be interesting to see if Norm Charlton can control his fork ball. I mean, what a pickup he has been middle of July for the Mariners. Didn't get a chance to work as many innings with the Phillies. That's what he's done in the champion in the division series. But yesterday, a lot of those fork balls in the dirt, the arm was tight. Lou Pinella has extended him a lot, looking for just a couple of more outs from him. Well, Andy Bennis, the starter who left, had a very good fastball as Randy Johnson has moved down to take a seat. Bennis giving up four hits, but there were six walks, one of them intentional. And now Charlton will attempt to hold the line with Paul O'Neill trying to get even more. He homered earlier for the Yankees. Bennis done for the day. A 
very low, and those of you who were with us yesterday remember the problems that Wilson had behind the plate. One of them finally getting away, and for a brief moment, the Yankees tied the game. As Charles was obviously a tired pitcher yesterday. In the air to left field, Coleman camps under it. Charlton does his job, but the Yankees lead it. We'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Yankees lead it by two, bottom of the seventh. Mattingly and O'Neill have provided the offense, but this guy with 109 pitches, and here's three of his best. The slider to Tino Martinez for a strikeout. The splitter to Buehler. And Newsom can't catch the fourth ball. The stump is still there. The Yankees hope it can last for three more innings. So he has fanned his last three hitters after Edgar Martinez doubled. He has knocked down four of the last five. He has given up five hits, striking out seven, and I think most impressively is that zero under BB. When David Cohn does not walk anybody, look out. That's when he became a Cy Young Award winner. He cut down on the base on balls. Charlton will stay in. The Yankees have left hand bats coming up the next inning. Bottom of the seventh. And the bottom of the order, Dan Wilson and Mike Blowers will start it off, and then it is Vince Coleman. What a difference a pitcher makes. to the beginning of when Abner invented this game and there's two areas you try to pitch hitters low and away high and tight and that's what Cohn's doing. They are simply nervous rather than noisy in Seattle now. It's a ball and two strikes. And the hired gun is dictating. Now let's give you the answer to the Toyota Diamond Dust question which stadium has hosted the second most games during postseason play. I knew you New Yorkers would get this. <laughs> I knew once I gave you that huge tip. That's a trick one. That one is. <laughs> you know how many baseball fans, young fans right now. What's Where, that? Where's the polo where's, grounds? Where's that? Where they play, how they well, play that's baseball the, at the polo grounds. That's where the Giants once played before Walter O'Malley convinced Horace Stone to go west. Young man, go west. And the face of baseball has never been quite the same sense and now Mike Flowers stepping in here remember when I was a kid and I followed the Braves and Warren Spahn and later got to meet him and heard guys talk about how he could finish a game off when he had a lead in the seventh. And Buck Showalter will not go to the bullpen unless he absolutely has to. And you can see Cone has almost kicked it into another gear. Another pitcher who I thought could finish was Bob Gibson. Yeah, not I thought Gibson come to get you with a one-run lead. It did not matter. That's the first sidearm hook we've seen him throw today. Feeling real confident when he tries that right here. The uh, fifth game with. The Yankees hoping to move on to Cleveland and open up on Tuesday night against the Indians with the Braves and the Reds ready to go out in the National League. And how excited is the state of Ohio right now? The Buckeyes, one of the best in college football. Reds are in the Indi Oh, mercy. It's a wealth of riches. 
back in Ohio this weekend. But Buckeye fans, just a little warning. You don't have to be warned. You've got to go to Madison next week. It's never easy, is it, for the Buckeyes when they go to Madison. Here's a former football player, Vince Coleman, back with the training camp in the National Football League as a punter. Didn't make it with the Washington Redskins. St. Louis Cardinals, among others, are forever happy. Slashed right at Mattingly. So now the Mariners are down to only two at bats. It's 4 2 Yankees. So the Yankees closing in on perhaps another trip. American League Championship Series in their first in a long, long time. It has been a drought for Yankee fans over this last decade. Judging from the crowds back in the Bronx for the first two games of this series, those folks are ready. Fouled away by Ruben Sierra, who came to the Yankees from Oakland and has absolutely embraced the Puerto Rican community. Trying to do some more damage here to Charlton. Looks like some pretty good gas when you're pitching on fumes. He threw it right by Sierra. That high leg kick, very vulnerable to that pitch. Mattingly. Two left hand hitters have taken Charlton out of the yard this year. They're both Yankees, Mattingly and O'Neill. Opportunity left in the bottom of the eighth if Charlton can clear the Yankees out. Charlton so tough on lefties. Not many pitchers get their fork ball to break down and away. He can do that. The left hand hitters. Baseball, or Donnie strikeout, or me. Into left and Coleman. That's where Mattingly put his huge ground rule double over there. And the winner of this game will take on the Cleveland Indians in the American League Championship Series. And a reminder that the postseason heats up. We begin coverage of the American and National League Championship Series. But have regional coverage Tuesday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, right here on ABC. Gerald Williams replaced Deion James. You know, we mentioned. 
Cheryl Williams having played out of Grambling State. And again, congratulations to Eddie Robinson. He has a few minutes. I hope he's able to enjoy watching a little baseball. 400 victories down there. It's, it's just a record that when you think about that any coach can win that many games, I mean, it is, it is monumental. Never in my lifetime did I think anybody would reach that figure. like yesterday again. It's full. And Williams on with a walk. Bringing up Yankee catcher Mike Stanley. One of the things not to be overlooked in this championship series as we watch Stanley step in is that the other night Back in the Bronx, Jimmy Lawrence, who had that dramatic home run, also worked 15 innings behind home plate. When you're a catcher and you're involved in this many games in the postseason, it is nice to have a night off. And that could help energize somebody like Mike Stanley. When you've got a quality backup like Jimmy Lawrence, as Williams leads off first now. Round ball to short for me, and he's up with it and force it second to Carl. And folks, here it comes. The heart of the matter, due up in Seattle. Here is the MCI proof positive replay, not of this game, but of the series. A very unusual play. Many of us have seen this go the other way with Tony Fernandez. But with Edgar Martinez on at third, Fernandez saves a base hit. Nobody's on at first. Randy Velarde came toward him. He flipped the ball to him. Velarde froze Martinez and retired Mike Flowers. The MCI proof positive replay of this series. And there have been some moments to savor in this five game showdown. And here comes another one. Joey Cora with an unlikely home run against David Cohn to lead it off. And then we'll move to Ken Griffey and Edgar Martinez. With the big unit starting to get loose. If they score, and that is not unusual for the Mariners to do that in their last at bat. Boy, have they been something against the Yankees. They've beaten them 11 times. Five in the last at bat. Why he has Johnson up is to get this crowd very much back into the thick of things. As soon as they saw the big unit get up, they rose as one. And now David Cohn has slipped behind Cora. Showtime in Seattle. Good job. Uh, Cora took him out of the yard, but Coleman and Cora have hit the ball in the air in every at bat, and that's the key to getting them out. A strikeout, Victor. 
Johnson in his last at bat. Tell him to break the concentration a little bit. Sweaty palm kind of day. Bobby Cuellar checking with his pitchers on the Mariner bench. Side corner, not to his liking, as Cone kept the ball away from him. Didn't want him to pull anything on him, and now it's 3 1 and 2 out. Dino is on. Now, Jay Buner steps up as the lead runner. Positioning Wade Boggs near the line, but the Yankees aren't as worried about that double down the line with Buner. It's the grand slam he hit off Cone in an earlier series. This is when the eighth inning becomes the ninth for David Cone. And when you're an ex-Yankee, this is a moment you can only hope for.
that's why this is like the last out of the game because Panella has no more long ball threats on the bench. aware of who Pinella has on the bench as you see Buner try to hold up and I think that's why he is going to make him hit a breaking ball. Diaz is over there. He has speed and Amaral but not power. Two balls and one strike. Last base hit. And Tino Martinez will hold it second. Probably be Doug Strange, another switch hitter off the bench. Left-hander. Mike Diaz. He's going to go with Diaz, and Alex Diaz was the player that filled in so well for Ken Griffey Jr. when he was hurt. And that means that carrying a third shortstop will eventually pay off for Lou Pinella. Alex Rodriguez over there on the dugout. Figures to get an inning in the field here in the night. Here Lee Ilyar over there at the bench. And Alex Diaz, who was born in Brooklyn, New York, will come up. But there'll be a confrontation, or a conversation, I should say. <laughs> First out on the mound. Uh, you know, athletes talk about how they look forward, and David Cohn has addressed it. He said, you, you want to be involved in these games, but you can't enjoy them until they're over. The same thing with Alex Diaz. Boy, you look forward to an opportunity to do something. Contreras is to say, how do you feel that Cohn is going to tell him, I feel great. I mean, there's no way he's going to ask out of this ball game. Pitch count well above whatever David usually goes. I think it has to be very revealing for Yankee fans to see Mariano Rivera up in throwing in this situation after the failure of Wetland in the eighth inning yesterday. That could be sending a message to Yankee fans and also the Cleveland Indians. Now remember, the Yankees can adjust their roster following this series. They cannot make Rick Honeycutt active, but they can go back down and pick up one of their minor league pitchers if they want to make a change down there. And chances are they might, especially for that left-handed side. Now, Diaz steps in with two out. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Tino Martinez with the time run on at second. Jay Buner over at first base, and here's Diaz. Not all the heroes in postseason play are named Mantle. Some of the other greats who've come through for the New York Yankees, other teams, never know. I'm like the fellow might pop up in the Lou Pinella here with time call. Is he looking for a uh, Going to look for somebody to run. Looking up and down his bench, he can't find anybody. Where is? I uh, need somebody with some speed. Where's Alex Rodriguez? Well, he's, he's got Rich Amaral. Where is Rodriguez? Where is the youngster? Come on. I'll be catching his breath in the clubhouse. Get him out there and let him run. Went in to get his running shoes on. Also to find his glove. Then he down home. Said, "Hey, mom, make sure you watch. I'm about to appear in a big moment." So here he is, number one draft choice out of the Miami area. This is the shortstop of the future. Pencil him in that lineup next year in April. The Mariners are going to take a look at him, and now he'll carry their tying run in '95 with Alex Diaz, who filled in for Ken Griffey Jr. following that injury. Griffey missing. About half a season. Rodriguez. Way from second. Two and all. 
help the Yankee outfield. Williams, and that could be a key position. Bigger Diaz slaps the ball that way off the turf. And O'Neill with an accurate arm is rather deep in, in right. Not much chance for him to throw him out from that position. Inning began with Joey Cora flying out. Then Griffey slugged the home run and made it a one run game. Then Edgar Martinez was retired on a ground ball. Back to back single by Tino. Buner and the pinch hitter Diaz. Griffey watching him from the Mariner bench. And it is three and one to Diaz. for warm bodies. Dan Wilson is listed as the next hitter. Doug Wilson Strange. has been used, but Doug Strange would be the only left-handed bat left over there in that dugout. Strikeouts, a lot of pitches. That's typical of David Cohn, and there's not quite the sharp. He's spilling it all out there, but there's not much left to spill. Three balls and one strike. If you're Doug Strange, you have to have the discipline to be able to say, if it's there, I'm going to swing at it. But it's not an automatic take. Fernandez, in for a word. He's going to make sure with Sam Perlazzo, Doug Strange. And I'm sure that's all that is, is hey, you know the zone you like it in. Have a good swing. Will the Yankees gamble on the slider? Three one and two out. Jackson on his feet. What a courageous effort by David Cohn. And what a moment for Mariano Rivera. This is all because of yesterday when the Mariners again ripped into Wetland. Buck Showalter trying to hold Wetland off 
for the ninth inning, hoping to get just an out out of Rivera. Mariano Rivera is a 25 year old rookie from Panama. And now the big unit gets serious. This would be his normal day to throw between starts. And Andy Pettit starts to loosen up. The Yankees have lost all confidence in Steve Howe, and if you're a Yankee fan, you don't need me to tell you why. Showalter gambling, and it has been an impressive Rivera so far in two appearances. You can see what he's done with seven K's. Good live fastball. And all he's hoping for now is just to be able to throw some strikes. And how fitting he has to face a former Yankee, Mike Flowers. I mean, it's not only tough to throw strikes right now, it's tough to breathe. We talked to Don Mattingly yesterday about what effect this crowd can have on your ability to control your emotions. Bases loaded in the bottom of the eighth inning. Mariano Rivera. Jack McDowell watching. He's available if they need him. Spot is taken. What a pitching job by Rivera. He justifies the confidence that Showalter pays any but the kid has done it again. The ninth inning is coming up, ladies and gentlemen. This 95 Division Series game is brought to you by Gillette Sensor and the Gillette Series. Gillette, the best a man can get. McDonald's, have you had your break today? And MetLife, get met, it pays. The ninth inning of a tied game five with the New York Yankees coming to the plate here at the top of the ninth inning. And defensively, you see that Flowers has moved across the infield to first. Strange goes to third. And Rodriguez is behind at shortstop. He is the youngest man to play in postseason competition since Claude L. Washington. He turned 20 years old in July. And then behind the plate, Chris Widger steps in into a tough spot. Hit deep, deep toward the gap. That ball is out of here. Off that top wall. Hold on, that's a double. Remember that. That ball is in play. I thought that baby was out of here up on top. But it's off the wall for a double. When you see strange things happen in the postseason, it hit the scoreboard. Tony Fernandez has not had a good year from the right side of the plate. 
And he leads off here with a double. That's amazing, Jimmy. After talking about that wall, I made that mistake that up above it is solid and there is no room above that padding out there. So it was my mistake all the way. Recover Yankee fans. Fernandez is on at second base now, and Randy Velarde steps in. There's the bunt going foul. And with those changes, you know, young Chris Widger, 24 year old rookie, less than 30 games experience in the big leagues. Now Blowers moves over to first. Not a good glove there. And so a little pressure on Blowers and Doug Strange here. Ironic again, that's something the Yankees do not do much of. Fewer sacrifice bunts than any team in the American League, but here's a chance for one to win them a ball game. Fernandez away from second. Good stop. He did a great job coming in the other night when they brought this youngster in behind the plate. Chris Widger replacing Wilson. Pressure on young Chris Widger trying oh. to catch that fourth ball. Unbelievable. He was back there in that 15 inning game. Quite a ways away, and he, you know, he has been playing with an injured knee. And as he scurried back into second base, might have aggravated it just a bit. Watch here, he had first indicated Jimmy he was going to go to third, and then he pulled back, and you can see there is some obvious pain. Yeah, that quick move, trainer Gene Monahan out immediately. Tony caught halfway in between where he thought he might be able to advance in that quick change of direction. Is what twisted that knee. Now here's where Fernandez struck this ball. And there you can see why I made the mistake on it was struck. And I obviously know better than that because that happens to have been a piece of this building that is very important to the Mariners this year. Because right to the right of the 380 sign is where Ken Griffey slammed into it. And that is a solid wall and very much in play. You can see how the padding is up against it. So Fernandez shaking it off on its second base. And Velarde now with a count of three balls and two strikes. The Yankees with the first two runners on against a struggling Norm Charlton. Here comes Lou. Like Cohn, Charlton out of gas. And even though Randy Johnson, the premier strikeout pitcher, it is a little different mentality coming in as a reliever. Sometimes those starters, they want a little time to get into the game. Johnson will not have that luxury. He's got to throw instant strikes. There's Pinella discussing right now with Charlton. No, he's had enough. Here comes the big fight. Now, 
situation. He's only pitched out of the bullpen twice in his career. Once as a member of the Expos in the late 80s and once with the Mariners two years ago. Again, the, the advantage for the Yankees in this situation facing a guy like Johnson 6'10", if you get the bump down, it's going to be pretty tough for Johnson to get off the mound and field it. Yeah, Strawberry with the bat, but I don't think you'll see Johnson. Bernie Williams, of course, from the right side of the plate. If they bunt, Manella will walk Williams, and it'll be Johnson against O'Neill. But when you intentionally walk the bases loaded and bring in a guy, even a Cy Young Award winner in all probability like Johnson, it is not as easy to throw strikes when you're not accustomed to coming out of the bullpen in late game situations. You tend to over throw the ball a little. See how Johnson reacts to it. If you're wondering about Boggs and the sacrifice bunt, he has three since joining the Yankees, two in 94 and one in 93. So Box comes up with Fernandez having gone in for a little more attention into the dugout. Box took the night off in game three. And so this is his first at bat against Johnson since 1992. Randy Johnson can do that to a good left handed hitter. Avalardi away from first. Got the bat, didn't it? Big break for the Mariners. Yeah, there's an example. That pitch well out of the strike zone. Tough to bunt. Toughest pitch to bunt's a high fastball when you haven't laid one down in two years. It's even tougher. Johnson threw it. Got 
his game face on in a hurry. Strikeouts or fly balls. He's got some inexperience at shortstop. Not an outstanding fielder at second, and Bowers not their regular first baseman. One ball and no strikes. Starter watches. Fans that have not seen him all year, a much better hitter and more power as a right handed hitter. will go to Cleveland to open the championship series on Tuesday night. And what that long last inning did Brent, not only tie the game, Ken Griffey Jr. will come to the plate this inning. Eleven wins this year, five of them in their last at bat, one a Griffey home run. The Mariners have come from behind a total of 45 times this season.
just firing strikes. He has ever since this series began. Buck Showalter talked about in spring training when Mariano Rivera made the team. A lot of the pitchers, Panamanian Rivera is that pitch in winter baseball. Face a lot of big leaguers, big crowds. Confidence that he could pitch in this situation. I don't think he pitched and won this noisy though. 0 2. And now Blackjack gets up. With Pennant. All hands on deck. Coleman has just lined a single. Buying some time right here to get McDowell a chance to get loose. Because if they were to bring Pennant in where they could walk Griffey, McDowell would face Edgar Martinez. Jimmy Cora had 13 sacrifice months during the season, and that's the second most in the American League. But it would only be fitting in a game like this, it was the Yankees' inability to get the button down and get the men over, something they don't do very often or very well. The Mariners will try to win the game. Doing something they do well, sacrifice fun. And aren't the Cleveland Indians enjoying oh, this? They don't see another Johnson nine innings. <laughs> has come into the game. He has appeared here. We've had a little bit of everything in this divisional playoff between the Yankees and the Mariners, and not done yet. The 23 year old looks in, Cora is up now. Coleman with all that speed on it first. Squares pops it up. They cannot get to it. Yeah, again, the toughest pitch to bunt is a high fastball. You, know, you have a tendency to get that bat underneath it. And even though Cora is a good bunter, it'll be a little tougher laying it down against Rivera's high heater. Ken Griffey waits. Snap over and sends Vince into the dirt. That's another option when you have a base stealer like Vince Coleman, 42 on the year. If he can read Rivera, he could steal second. Cora could bunt him to third. Foot on the carpet for Coleman. Or a squares. There's the bunt. It's perfect. Devante with the put out. And the series winning runner has moved along to second base. Junior, a chance to win it. I don't know. Ordinarily, you would say, "Well, wait a minute. You got you got first base open. Would you give him a chance to even swing the bat?" Well, perhaps he would walk. But you've got to also think about who's oh. next over there, and that happens to be Edgar Martinez. So what a great option! Really protect each other in this lineup. So Edgar will be coming on. Have a saying in around the batting cage. The simplest statement in baseball. Boy, what success against Rivera. 
Punt them over, get them in. That's all the Mariners are trying to do. And the chant begins already. Yesterday, Edgar Martinez with the Mariners down five. Save the eardrums and show Walter comes out to the mound. Man, but make a move here against Edgar. Doesn't get any better. The league's best hitter against the former Cy Young Award winner. Like Jack McDowell is coming on. And then of course later with the bases loaded in the eighth inning. Martinez again stepped up and this time hit a slam. He drove in seven runs yesterday with those two dramatic home runs. Check in with Buck Showalter. Want to make sure they have the signs right with Fernandez and Velarde. And be aware of Coleman's ability to steal third. And the challenge to Mike Stanley is to block that McDowell fork ball. Oftentimes, again, talked about with Randy Johnson. You're used to being a starter. You come in fresh out of the bullpen, not apt to have good command of that splitter. The man of the hour yesterday. It was one of the greatest hitting performances ever in postseason play. Two home runs. And then this. Let's see, 50% in two days, not bad for me, Jimmy. <laughs> wow. I mean, baseball's not all the way back. It's going to take a long time, but games like this will sure speed up the process. Yeah, it is a baseball town. It's become one in September of 95 and October. Along with his thoughts right now, McDowell. The opponent of the big unit when the series moved west, and how fortunes have changed after that 15 inning drama unfolded in the Bronx. The Mariners win two in a row here. And now a chance to win it. As Jack McDowell will come on now and make the first relief appearance of his career. You don't often pitch around the guy with third base open, but if you check who's on deck, you might not give Edgar Martinez too much to hit. Take a chance with the rookie. Martinez ready. That would be the question mark with McDowell missed 15 days a couple of starts with a strained muscle under the scapula started a game said his shoulder or back is all right but his control has not been as sharp since the injury. Thomas of us will enjoy lip reading were denied that pleasure by Black Jack that time and now you go back to work a ball and no strikes here on Edgar Martinez.
be a thing the Mariner base runners will be aware of. Jack McDowell has one of the best pickoff moves for a right-hander in baseball. It's two balls and a strike. Sign on now. Reached for that pitch. Edgar Martinez is fanned by Jack McDowell in his first relief appearance. And now the youngster, Alex Rodriguez, will come up with two out. Wow. A splitter that hung a little high, but in a zone where Martinez just swung over it. Actually got him out with a hitter's pitch. You can see the disgust on his face. Alex Rodriguez due to take over in 96 could be the cover boy in 95. McDowell trying to give the Yankees another chance in the 10th inning. Short Fernandez up with it to Bernardi, and they forced him, and we'll go to the tenth inning. It's a series that just won't end. It really has been a wonderful series, and all of us will take away some great memories from this. Really deserve to go into extra innings. When you think about all the drama that we have had through those two games back in the Bronx, 15 innings, ending in the rain with Jim Leyritz, then out here through two more. Now Ruben Sierra against Randy Johnson. It is interesting as we look at Randy and Jim Cott. You may have noticed put a little asterisk on his comment. Who <laughs> said one inning? But you know how managers are in these situations. Strike. Well, well that reminded me of uh, Earl Weaver for just a moment of the corner of the dugout. Full pack. That high breaking ball to Edgar Martinez got this crowd quiet for a while, but now they're back into it. Two balls and two strikes, and Sierra's ready. Drifting over toward the third base seats. Just incredible here. Now you wonder where Pinella will go next. He 
have lost confidence in Ayala. Sierra went. He is punched out by Morrison. Butterfield argues, and Sierra not happy. And Showalter will save his designated hitter. Yeah, he wants to keep him in the ball game. Seen a lot of those today because we've had pitchers like Cohn and Bennis and now Johnson with good breaking balls. He did not appear to go. Morrison saw it the other way. And here's Matt Inley, who prior to Friday night had enjoyed pretty good success against Johnson. But not that evening. Go with him, Brett, but you, when you said, I wonder where Luke Pinella will go next, I think if Johnson can't get him out, he's going to Tampa. Hitters, three strikeouts. Gerald Williams on. And this could be a most unlikely hero for the Yankees because if there's one hitter on their roster that can turn on a Randy Johnson fastball, Mattingly couldn't. It throws him. It's Gerald Williams. Hit two home runs off Johnson in a game a couple of years ago.
takes a big turn and again the Mariners are knocking on the door. Chris Widger. Take a deep breath and try to bunt him over. And even though Buner's not a base stealer, Sam Mejia's first base coach reminded him McDowell has a quick move to first. That discussion is about off this turf. If the infielders get a good break, they'll try to nail Buner at second. Mattingly and Boggs solid at the corners. Jimmy, we talked about the uh, NFL scores a little bit earlier. And I got kind of mention on the <laughs> of the four overtime games. It's the first day in the history of the NFL that they have had four. Overtime games on one Sunday. The only fitting. Yeah, we saw the graphic a while ago of the extra inning games. I was fortunate to be covering that game seven of the 91 World Series. Minnesota won it one zip. This is right there with it. So Chris Witcher. Took part in one classic earlier, and McDowell snaps the throw over with Buner on it first. See, with that good pickoff move, Buner's not able to get a good lead, so they might try to throw him out at second on a bunt. I think that the catcher got in front of Evans on that pitch. When Stanley rose up. It just might have broken the sight line. Widger checking with third base coach Sam Perlazzo. He may not have had the bunt sign. Or Perlazzo reminding the rookie, don't bunt it to Mattingly. One ball and no strikes. Buner steps off first. Foul ball. He hit that so hard that if Mattingly had come up with it on the short hop, he'd have had a shot at Buner. Oh, if, he, if that stayed fair, the Yankees got a double play. So they got a break when it went foul. Four four bottom of the tenth. One and two on the young catcher. Looking for a sign with two strikes, there's only one. Made some contact and advanced the runner. Out. I believe he even went after a bad pitch that time. Yeah, that's a big gamble by Lou Pinella. I think the one thing he wanted to stay out of was the double play. So he went ahead and gambled on the sacrifice bunt. The breaking ball. And what that does by staying out of the double play, if Strange does, is it also would get Mike Blowers to the plate. It's possible that when he bent down, Widger believed that it was going to be a strike and he would have to go after it. Because it was a late strange reaction, as you saw. And speaking of strange, here's Doug, now the hitter. He's taken over at third base with Flowers switching to first. Tino Martinez, who homered off McDowell Friday night, is out of the lineup. He was lifted for a pinch run. No one now. You talk about taking your game to another level. When you look at Jack McDowell's eyes, started Friday night, as you mentioned, coming off that strained muscle in the back. 
What a determination there. Ground ball to second. Baloney fires to Fernandez. A quick relay. Not in time. Looks like he might have caught a knee. Again, players. They're spilling everything out there going into second base hard, and Buner caught probably Tony Fernandez's knee right in the helmet. Nice pivot by Velarde, off balance throw. And close at first. Accidentally with the foot body. Jay's face shaking up on that one, partner. They might have a bloody his lip a little bit. in the hole makes the nice throw. Tony always with that on the run flip toss can't get enough on it and Winger with the head first slide in just in time. And up comes Vince Coleman. Those corner outfielders become real important. Gerald Williams playing very shallow, and O'Neill is too deep and right to be able to throw the runner out. Strange away from second. A lot of that was David Cohn. Now McDowell handled. Until Vince's third at bat in game three. And that's when Vince rocketed a triple. No balls and a strike to the Mariner left fielder. Ground ball. Mattingly goes to Fernandez, and the side is retired here at the bottom of the tenth. The series that won't end one moment after another. On two days rest, Jack McDowell and Randu Johnson continue on to the 11th inning. And I think McDowell, he went five on Friday night. He'd go nine if he had to. I doubt Pinella would let Johnson go more than this one. Johnson has faced six hitters. He has struck out four of them. And here's the Yankee catcher. Pitches. And 
now you got an interesting situation and Buck Showalter is going to do it right now Mike Stanley will come out of the game Pat Kelly he's got plenty of bench players left Jim Laritz Russ Davis Daryl Strawberry so Kelly will run and Fernandez will in all probability run him over. So here's Fernandez who doubled his last time up. Fernandez with a beauty bunt and the sacrifice moves the runner along Pat Kelly to second base. Don't walk many hitters to get to Wade Boggs. In fact, it won't be Wade Boggs. It'll be Jim Laritz who's going to go in the game to catch for Mike Stanley anyway. So that would mean the Mariners will pitch to Velarde. Chance to be a hero twice in a week, Laritz. So the Yankees now with the lead run again away from second base. Pinella looks at that. He might think twice about pitching to him with first base open. Base hit. Kelly coming around. He's going to score on Coleman. Yankees lead it now. Randy Velarde. A single to left field. Pat Kelly dashes home off Randy Johnson. They have finally broken through. And Randy Velarde, one of those veterans left over from the Lou Pinella era, who has really had a tough series, continues his success. Coleman comes up and not a strong throwing arm. Takes that high bounce off the turf, and Kelly slides in easily. A timely move by Buck Showalter. And now the young man who ended that incredible drama in the Bronx. 1.15 a.m. with the rain coming down. Turned in 15 solid innings behind the plate. He'll be in there in the bottom of the 11th inning as the catcher. Johnson backs away now. With the Yankees leading at 5-4. Looks calm, but stomach has to be churning right now. Showalter knows that he's going to need some arms loose down to that bullpen. Andy Pettit has been up already. A left hander. Where does he go from the right side? Wickman, maybe. Backs out. Because the heart of that Mariner order he is due up. Joey Cora, Ken Griffey, and Edgar Martinez in the bottom of the inning as Lavers takes a strike. Careful. The only Don't he's got throw anything now. Jorge Posada, a backup catcher left. Buck Showalter out of the dugout immediately. Umpires have shown great restraint in this series. You can imagine the emotions of the players, and there haven't been any quick hooks. Yeah, veteran crew, they have not looked for trouble. When either dugout's been on them, they have more or less looked the other way. Of course, the umpiring crew changed once they moved out to the West Coast. There was a little more trouble back in the Bronx. And now Bernie Williams is due to come up. Here is the pitch. Well, that's knee high inside corner. Laris didn't see it that way. I not think that was a bad pitch at all. You could see in the side shot it comes across the knees. 
And now Bernie Williams steps in, getting right-handed, and Mariners will put him on. Many times you walk a hitter to get to a former batting champion, but they'll take their chances on O'Neill. And Brent, when you said who would Buck Showalter go to, I think with the gutty performance we've seen already with Jack McDowell, he has complete confidence in him going through the heart of that Mariner order. Cora, Griffey, and Edgar. Three Mariners do up. And now Paul O'Neill. Yankees lead it 5 4. Top of the 11th. Two out. Strike here with two out, top of the 11th. Enjoying every moment of this room, every member of the Cleveland Indians, as these two continue to battle. Johnson who really those of you that haven't seen a lot of him you'd think of him as a power pitcher 294 strikeouts but he has become a complete pitcher and he's really gone to the breaking ball more in this inning hasn't thrown a lot of fastballs. Make sure, Brent, when you look back at this ball game, and you can keep all the numbers and talk about the hitting stars, but in its simplest form, it's throwing strikes. And the thing that has cost the Mariner pitching staff today is Bobby Cuellar looks down at the turf. Four of the five Yankee runs have been put on by base on balls. But the Yankees score a run to go ahead in the top of the 11th. Three outs away from Cleveland. Jack McDowell won a Cy Young Award, accomplished a lot of things in his career, but he has yet to win a postseason game in the majors. And with Bellardi moving over to third, Kelly's at second. And Leyritz moves in behind the plate. And now Joey Cora will lead it off. And Filardi shortens up just about a step at third.
former teammates in that 93 championship series facing each other. Brought a live arm in on two days rest. Jack McDowell on Friday night working five and a third innings. Gave up five runs. Struck out four, but he walked four. There's that bunt. And Mattingly again, he makes the move and he didn't get it. We're going to have the same argument. No. Dan Morrison said, no way. He went out of the line to avoid the tag. Now, it's interesting because the umpires discussed this rule. Clearly, Mattingly making the move on it, and they said that Cora would have a good three feet. That they would establish the line for him if Mattingly made a move. This is the second time that the play has come up in this series, and this umpiring crew has been all over it. Now that lane down there is really comes into play on a throw to first base in case the runner is inside that lane. So Cora with the butt has started it off again. Ken Griffey. And remember the McDowell pickoff move. Just missing outside. Larence disgusted, you can tell by his body language. The umpire without turning around to show him up. Now he checks the dugout to see if Buck's got anything on with four on at first base. Get on the ground, base hit. Bernie Williams up with it, but Cora scampers to third base. And the Mariners still refuse to lose.
for the Indians. Yeah. He's going to be a day off, and they're coming here. Brett, unbelievable down here. It was an incredible series, and the New York Yankees have lost it in a heartbreaking fashion. Quick look.